Hello iTracking community, my name is Michael and in this tutorial we will talk about the three main steps of an eye tracking analysis. Over my many many years in eye tracking research I have learned that there are three main steps during the analysis of eye tracking data. And these three main steps are first the data quality check, second the data preparation and finally the data analysis. And in this series of tutorials I would like to go now into every of these three steps and give you how to use tips and tricks to show you what I have learned during my now 15 years in eye tracking research. In the first part of this series, which is this tutorial, we will talk about how we can check the recording frequency. Please have a look into the description of this video and into this playlist where you can find other tutorials and videos for these three main steps. So on the screen we can see Blickshift Analytics after the import of the eye tracking data. And this is what I do at first after the import. So I check here what Blickshift chose to me. So we imported one data set, one scenario, so one stimulus and one task, three participants, 70 columns of data and in total a data set with a time duration of roughly six minutes over all the participants. This looks okay for me. Since Blickshift Analytics also detected that the data has been imported with a pupil lapse eye checker, it automatically set here these parameters for me. So for the gaze coordinates, these columns, for the fixation coordinates, these columns, and here these columns with the time units. If you want to learn more about the differences between gaze points and fixations, please have a look at this tutorial. So now we want to check the recording frequency. And this is easy in Blickshift Analytics. I go to the data source, I make a right click, I choose visualizations and then line graph. I select all the participants and I zoom out a bit. The time axis goes here from the top to the bottom. And we have the three participants in parallel side by side. So let's focus here on the first participant. What we can see here on the left side is a very good data set. So this gaze timestamp line graph goes from the top left to the bottom right. It shows a constant line diagonally over the screen. And this means that the recording frequency is constant. There are no leaps. There are no gaps in the data. So we have a constant delta T between every data line. And between every data line, we can see the same distance on the time axis. You immediately will understand how this is working if we look here at P3. I select now only P3. And here we can find two leaps in the data. So what has happened here? I go to the line graph. I make a right click. I say visualizations and then drill down. I use the current marking. So I click here now with the mouse. I hold the mouse button down and I select this leap here. Then I zoom in to view data. I scroll down until we come into this section. And what we can see here where the leap is happening, when we look here at the gaze timestamp, we have a constant delta T and then the timestamp is immediately going from this value to this value. Since we are on the level of seconds, we can find here a delta T between 560 seconds to 607 seconds. So 47 seconds of a time leap. The reason for these 47 missing seconds could be, for example, that someone pushed the pause button during the recording. So no new data has been recorded during this time, but the clock is ticking. And after a while, the recording has been continued and new data comes in. However, other reasons could be some malfunctions of the sensors, some performances issues 
something which lead to a high demand, for example, of the processes so that it could not deliver new data with this constant frequency. So if something like this happens during your recording, or if you find something like this later during the data quality check, you really should check your experimental setup, your network, your computers, your data synchronization algorithms. This is one possible issue which you can find during the data quality check when you look at the recording frequency. So let's do a short summary at this point. In this visualization, you can see a perfect recording. So in this line graph visualization, you will find this diagonal constant line here. If you find something like this, there could have been some issues during the recording because some data is missing. And there are two other types of line graphs which you could find when you visualize the timestamps of a recording. So you could also find a visualization like this. So at the beginning, you have this nice diagonal line, but then you have this vertical line and then the diagonal line again. The reason for such a behavior could be that the original data files do not have a time column with a constant delta t anymore. If you find something like this, you should go definitely into the data, check the delta t, so the differences between the different timestamps, because it could be that where the, you find this more or less vertical line, the delta t's become so small, so many, many data comes in, is stored into the CSV file, but the recording frequency is higher than before or after. This could be one reason. Another reason could just be that the recording clock has stopped for whatever reasons, and then you also should check your experimental setup or the time synchronization algorithms. I will do a special tutorial for this behavior for sure in the future. Finally, what you can find is a visualization of the timestamps which looks like this. This is easy to explain. So time is ongoing with a recording frequency until a certain value. And then it goes back to, for example, zero. So it starts over. So from my experience, at least if you work with Plickshift Analytics, the reason for this visualization of the timestamps is that there's a wrong mapping between scenarios and data lines during the import. If you cannot solve this issue with a right mapping between scenarios and data lines during the import into Blickshift Analytics, you should also have a look at the experimental setup and the recording itself. In this first part, I've shown you how you can check the timestamps in your data. In the next tutorial, we will talk about how you can check the quality of the recorded eye movements. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please push the like button, subscribe to our channel and activate the bell so that you'll never miss a new tutorial on this channel. And I'm looking forward seeing you in the next tutorial.